That was David Bamford, the time nine minutes past seven. The energy firm Quadrilla says it's scaling back its drilling at Balcom in West Sussex after talking to the police. Why? Well, it's not local protests that are the potential problem. It's a much bigger threat. Six days of direct action promised by the same group who managed to shut down West Burton Power Station in Nottinghamshire last year. Jamie Kelsey Fry speaks for No Dash for Gas, which is allied to uh, reclaim the power, that wider group, and um, Mr Kelsey Fry is on the line. Good morning to you. Good morning, Justin. What's planned? Uh, we have uh, Saturday and Sunday is a very tight schedule of workshops and skill shares and talks. Some of the talks will include people from other countries around the world who have already gone through uh, fracking, which has destroyed their environment and their society. So we'll be hearing from Algeria, pe people from Canada. And uh, yes, as you just mentioned, on Monday and Tuesday, People are going to have the opportunity in small groups to engage in their own forms of direct action to try and make a point about quadrilla, controversialised gas across the country and make people, think, make people think twice about what our Prime Minister is saying is a safe thing to do. And what form will that direct action take? Well, there's all kinds of uh, forms of direct action. In fact, direct action has been happening for the past two and a half weeks by the local groups in the sense that they've been using their bodies to try and slow down or stop the trucks that are going in and out of the plant. Is there an intention to break the law and to try to get into uh, the Quadrilla site? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. Everyone's making their own plans about how they're going to make their direct action. But do, the, do you um, think it's the, you the think, six can, can I just ask you this? Well, can, I just put it, can I just put it a different way then? W is it, would it be a bad idea for people to try to get into the site? Would you be against that happening? Personally, I can't say well, what I think other people should or shouldn't do. Why not? I think it's a very... Uh, but, well, because everyone has to make their own choices. If you're talking about people taking actions they'll get arrested for, then that has to be a very personal choice they make themselves. But what I do, can, uh, what I do think that people should be doing is everything they can to make the country think twice about what David Cameron's decision is to push for gas and to also use these forms of extreme some extraction. Thing, some people might, indeed some local people, might say it is slightly sinister though, that a lot of people from outside turn up and, and seem to think that you just have the right to do what your own consciousness tell you to do, which of course we don't always have the right to do in, in a modern democratic society, but you seem to be taking it on yourselves as a group to say, I believe this, therefore I have the right to do whatever I want in support of it. OK, Justin. Well, uh, first of all, uh, it was only about three weeks ago where six women climbed the shard and it became a very, very popular act that they did and they raised awareness about Shell and other leading fossil fuel corporations going to the Arctic and people actually thought, saw that as a very heroic and brave thing to do. And I'm sorry to get out the obvious, Justin, but it was exactly these kind of actions hundreds of years ago that gave women the vote through the suffragettes. It's absolutely no difference. If you're talking about people, young people out in the countryside taking actions that aren't going to do any harm or damage to anyone else. They're risking their, their liberty and, and personal harm to themselves because they feel so strongly that this government's made a disastrous choice. Then I think they should be seen not as dodgy people who may be risk it, risking uh, anything else. They're actually brave people who I think if we stop this dash for gas, we will look back and say thank you. When we realise what hydraulic fracking does to all the other countries that are beginning to engage in it, let's bear in mind, in France it's completely banned, and that's for a reason, mm. because they've looked at the side and they've seen the damages. Uh, yes. So at the moment, uh, you know, o uh, over the course of today and yesterday, there's been so many interviews where people are trying to imply that these protesters are dangerous people who are really taking advantage of the poor people of Balkan. We're miles away from Balkan. Well, no, yeah, I mean, I suppose people what people taking... are saying is that what they're trying to do is prevent something happening that um, has a legal right to happen and, and that they're taking upon themselves um, uh, the, the, the right, if you like, to enforce their own conscience, which we none of us have. I think that they, ha they are uh, unusual in this country and that the kind of people who are involved in reclaim the power are people who actually understand much more deeply than most people what fracking actually represents. Because it's oh, not so they the just know more about it. So because they yeah, think they, they know more about, more about it, about they, it. Ha they have the right to, to enforce their views on everyone else and stop something happening that might well be accepted by the rest of the country. Well, I think it's more to do with the fact that there's not that much information that's pushed out into the public at the moment about all the negative sides of hydraulic fracking 
the, the so-called positive sides that our Prime Minister has been pushing is much more of the pervasive view that the public has been given. These, young, these people are very, very well informed. Otherwise, you wouldn't take an action like that. Let me just remind you, this is not fun. People aren't going down there for fun. It's not fun to see the heavy policing that I predict will be happening over this weekend. So your listeners have to ask themselves, why are these people taking these risks and putting themselves out? And I would suggest it's because they have studied and they know the dangers of hydraulic fracking and this insane dash for gas when we should ins instead be going for sustainables and renewables. Final if question. You actually care Sorry to interrupt you. Final question. If, if the locals want you to leave, will you? Because the parish council has made it pretty clear that it doesn't want any protest that involves breaking the law. W w would you consider going if they asked you to? Well, we're in a field miles away from the, from the village, so the parish council is speaking for that small village. I think we're probably by now, our site is closer to Cockfield, which is another village around the corner. So the answer is no, really you won't go if they ask you to? We're in a field miles from the, from the village, and you've got to realise that there's, there's many, many people in that village who are completely behind what we're doing and grateful. The mothers in particular with young children who don't want the dangers of their children not being able to drink the drinking, the, 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 the drinking water because it's become um, polluted. It's obvious when people think about it. Jamie, Kelsey Fry, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Let's um, talk as well to Professor Peter Stiles, who's Professor of Applied and Environmental Geophysics at Keele University, has advised the Department of Energy on the safety of fracking. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. It, 